Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.0 and Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet Module. Welcome to tutorial 18, Harpoon. Today I'm going to demonstrate the employment of the AGM-84D Harpoon anti-ship missile, which is a fully autonomous, sea-skimming, radar-guided anti-ship missile. On the aircraft here, you can see the maximum possible loadout of four Harpoon missiles. These can be loaded singly on stations 8, 7, 3, and 2. The Harpoon can be employed in two main modes, uh, one of which is called Bearing Only Launch, which, as the name might suggest, you fire the missile on a given heading, uh, you tell it to activate its radar and start autonomously homing on sea targets after a set distance, and you also set a distance at which it should self-destruct if it has not found a target. There is also a mode called R slash BL, uh, which is uh, range with bearing launch. Uh, and in that mode, you actually have a designated target position in the form of a sensor point of interest or a designated waypoint, and the missile will fly there. There are a bunch of options with regards to altitudes, uh, terminal guidance modes, uh, you can give it a turning point, things like that. Uh, but I'll cover all of that in a moment. Uh, but uh, these are the two main modes of employment. So let's get into the cockpit here and start setting ourselves up to use this missile. Uh, and just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to hide the pilot body and the stick here. Uh, primarily for the bearing only launch, which is the one I'll demonstrate first, we're going to be using the SMS page, Stores Management System, and the HSI. We get a lot of good information on the HSI uh, for the missile. So first things first, air to ground master mode. Um, in preparation for the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my radar into C mode, uh, but uh, we're not going to use that right now because first we're going to demonstrate the bearing only. Uh, weapon profile is called HPD. Let's box that, and you'll notice that it goes through a little timeout. This is simply the missile powering on and aligning itself. So we'll give that a little bit of time, and then we'll be ready to program the missile for our first launch. And you can see on, on the, the profile or the program uh, page below, as always, we can have multiple programs. So I could pre-program the missile to operate uh, in one of four profiles and flip between them by pressing the prog button. I can also enable tone. Uh, I'm going to put tone on because that's just a bit of fun. And we also have data, but that's non-functional with this missile. So uh, you can see here, mode, B-O-L, bearing only launch. That's the first thing we're going to use. Uh, flight is the altitude at which the missile will fly as it ingresses towards the target. Uh, if I click FLT, you've got options for low, medium, and high. These corresponding to 5,000 feet in the case of low, 15,000 feet in the case of medium, and 35,000 feet in the case of high. We're going to go for low in this case because we're already flying over the water. This would be very useful if you're flying over terrain initially because the missile does not have any terrain avoidance. So if you tell it to fly too low, it will hit terrain and you probably don't want that. And then term for terminal guidance. It can either pop up or it can sea skim. Now this is going to vary based on the kind of target you're going to hit. If it's some kind of military vessel with any kind of armour, you probably want it to pop up because it will then pop up and hit from above, probably striking the deck. Skimming uh, mode will cause it to hit closer to the waterline. It's going to hit the side. We're actually hitting an oil tanker today, so we're just going to skim it. Then on the right-hand side, you have options for a harpoon turning point uh, for a fixed point, which currently doesn't seem to work, so I'm going to skip over that right now. You can step your missiles using the step button. And UFC will allow you to control the last three parameters here on the right. Uh, so I'm first going to do just a straight out launch, but I'm then also going to do a launch with the harpoon steering point. In order to achieve that, I'll already have a waypoint selected because it always uses your current waypoint. You'll see if I hit HPT, the missile will fly to that waypoint and then fly the heading I've given it. But we're going to disable that for the first launch. Let's press UFC. Let's press bearing, and I want a bearing of 289er, enter. You'll see that it now draws a line for me. Uh, destruction range is currently set to 60 nautical miles, and that's represented by the cross on the end of the line. That's fine for my purposes. 
and then search. I want it to go out 15 nautical miles before it starts to search. And you can see there that we also get a little line on the line, a dash, I guess you could call it. So the missile will fly on this heading, then it will turn on its radar, and it will seek on the very first thing it detects using its radar. This is why the search distance is important. You can use this to shield your own friendly ships from the missile, because it has no IFF capability. It will strike the first thing that it sees on radar, friendly or foe. So it's very important that you do not fire it anywhere near friendly ships. So, as you can see, Profile here, search, 15 nautical miles. Destruction, it's 60 nautical miles if it hasn't hit anything by then. Going to fly in a bearing of 289er. Okay, and uh, you'll see, here we go. Uh, we've got Harpoon, bearing only launch, in zone. So we could actually fire this missile right now. Uh, you might get messages sometimes saying that you're not in range or uh, the bearing is wrong, you know, like you're too off axis and things like that. So, you know, pay attention to the messages up here, but if you get in zone, then you can launch. Coming out of active pause, squeezing pickle and the missile is away. Let's launch a second one and again, bearing only launch, but this time we'll actually use a turn point. So let's go UFC, bearing 289, enter, search again at 15 nautical miles, and I'm selecting Harpoon Turn Point. Actually, given that we have a Harpoon Turn Point, it's going to have to be a completely different heading. Oops, ah, that'll do, 222. Yeah, that's probably more like it. So that's all looking pretty good. Bearing only launch, medium, and skim. Harpoon away again. Let's go to the F10 view and see where our missiles went. Yeah, first one is actually kind of shadowing us a little bit. Let's see where the second one went. <laughs> this one's actually... Oh, it's just starting to accelerate now. That's quite cool. Uh, these have quite kind of low energy but sustaining motors, so they burn for a long time. So it's just pulling away from me now. This one's flying out on the heading that I gave it. Let's accelerate time. Let's see if I actually gave it a good heading, because it could be uh, that I've messed up here. Let's see what happened. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. It turned. It's now ducking down. And you can see on the horizon, there's the ship that I wanted it to hit. Let's just confirm that this does, in fact, hit the target. That's looking good. Yeah, it definitely sees the target. It's turning. It's going to come down into the skim now, and it will make the... Uh, the, the kind of terminal part of its flight. Boom! Right on the stern. Good hit. Uh, let's go to the F-10 map and see what our other missile is doing. Can't actually see it. Let's go F-6. Looks like this one might have turned now. Let's again accelerate time. Uh, this one I kind of eyeballed, so it's entirely possible that I've messed this up. Uh, there's a good chance <laughs> this is not going to hit anything. Uh, I don't even know where this one is, to be honest. But uh, yeah, don't do that. Oh, there it is. It's all the way down here. The ship I want to hit is around about here. So yeah, we've messed that one up. Uh, you get the idea in any case. Don't eyeball it like I just did. Actually know where your, where your target is and then fire at it. Okay, I'm going to reset the simulation now and we'll come right back and do the uh, range and bearing launch modes. Okay, I've reset the simulation, we're back in the cockpit. Once again, we're in air-to-ground master mode, and I've now selected the Harpoon. Um, I'm going to demonstrate two different ways of doing the range and bearing launch. First, I'm going to do a range and bearing launch referencing a waypoint. I've placed waypoint 2 pretty much exactly where this ship is. So with waypoint 2 selected, I can waypoint designate, and I now have a target point. This is the most important thing. Until you have a target point, you cannot use range and bearing mode. So if I, if I was to press mode before doing that, it wouldn't do anything. But now that I have a target point, I can flip between BOL and R slash BL. We're going to choose R slash BL, and you'll see that the options change. Although some of them remain the same. So uh, we have uh, flight. So again, we can choose our altitude between 5,000 feet, 15,000 feet, and 35,000 feet. This time I'm going to keep it on medium. Terminal will allow us to flip between pop-up and skim. This time I'm going to try pop-up. 
and now we have this option called Seek. Now what Seek does is tells the missile when to turn on its radar prior to reaching the set target point. You have options, if I click this actually, you have options for large, small and medium. And these correspond to uh, small being 5.4 nautical miles, medium being 10.8 nautical miles, and large being 16.2 nautical miles. Now you would use these either based on the speed of the target uh, or on your certainty around the position of the target. Uh, in this case, we're fairly certain that waypoint is quite close. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch. That's one away. And the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is how we could actually engage the target uh, with a radar position. Because when we're using a waypoint designation, we cannot use a harm turn point because these are mutually exclusive. The harm turn point would use our current waypoint. And of course, when we have um, a designated waypoint, that's always going to be uh, the, the waypoint the, the system will see. Because, so you can't have the target and the turn point be the same thing. So here we go, I'm on my way around. I can see a target on the C radar. I've pushed sensor select switch to the right. I now have my cursor. I'm gonna go ahead and put my cursor over the target and go sensor select switch right again. And I now have a target. Let's go ahead and active pause this just now so that we don't uh, get too ahead of ourselves. And yeah, here we go, this is my target. I can now put myself into range and bearing mode. And you can see on the HSI, target position is repeated on the HSI, and I don't need to enter any further information. I could immediately launch the missile at this point. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select waypoint 1. That actually seems to have deselected the target. Let's get it back. There we go. So I now have the target. I'm in range and bearing mode, and I have waypoint 1 selected. I could now box HPTP, which is Harpoon Turn Point, and that's going to make the missile fly to waypoint one first and then turn on the target. Uh, in the meantime, let's check F6. Looks like our, our missile is just about to hit the, uh, the target there. Let's watch the first missile strike this target and then we'll do our second launch and demonstrate how the harpoon turn point works. Let's accelerate that because we don't want to wait too long. So you can see it's skimming along at very, very low altitude. As it approaches the target, it's going to do a pop-up, and then it's going to strike the deck, or at least it should do. Looks like our waypoint was pretty accurate. There we go. Pop-up engaged. Coming down. Boom, I actually hit it right on the front there. That's a good hit. Okay, let's uh, come out of active pause. Uh, now, the only issue here is uh, we are a little bit too close to our turn point, I think. So let's uh, let's come off. We're probably about to lose that, that uh, radar target, but that's okay. We'll reacquire in just a moment. Uh, I'm actually needing quite a bit of roll trim as well, now that I've launched one missile but not the other. But that's us. We're back in, uh, back in a somewhat trimmed condition. Let's come all the way around and uh, see then if we can hit it. You can see now that on the HUD it's complaining about off-axis. So it's, it's basically saying you're not facing the waypoint, you can't launch, which is fair enough. So let's get a little bit of distance between us and that waypoint, and then we're going to come back around. And in fact, let's accelerate time a little bit so we don't have to wait too long. Okay, that'll do it. Out of burner, let's come around and reacquire the target. There we go. There we go. Let's again go sensor select switch to the right. That's nice. We're now in range and we have the harpoon turn point. Pickle and the missile is away. We should see that the missile is going to turn away from our aircraft. It's going to fly towards waypoint one. I'm actually going to pop this into autopilot right now so that it doesn't end up flying around in circles. So if we jump into the F-10 map, we can see the missile is going to fly to waypoint one now. It will then fly in the direction of that uh, target that we gave it using the C mode of the radar. 
So again, let's accelerate time. There we go. It's reached waypoint one. It's now turning. And it's coming down. Yep, it's got it's got the angle on that target. So again, Harpoon Turn Point is a really good way of deconflicting your missile from friendly ships. Uh, you can either set the seeker distance in bearing only mode, or you can set a harpoon turn point when you're in range in bearing mode to ensure that the missile never goes anywhere near friendly ships. Because as I said, it will just as happily strike a friendly ship as an enemy one. Boom! That's another strike, that's probably enough to take that ship out. So, there you go. Uh, those are the two main modes in which you can employ the AGM-84D Harpoon Missile on the Hornet. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is that at the time of launch, you cannot uh, be below 2,500 feet, and you cannot be um, any kind of negative G. You have to make sure that uh, you're in kind of one or positive G, basically. So, there you go. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Um, you also have the option of joining Deep Hack's ground crew below by clicking the join button if you'd like to support the channel even more. I'm very thankful to those who've chosen to do so. Uh, current Deep Hack's ground crew members are Frantic Stone, Channel Wright, Storm Kambari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, Mangash, Pink Floyd, J.R. Walker, Chandra Hedgewald, and Griff Nizzle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.